Introducing Estelle T. Griswold and C. Lee Buxton v. Connecticut. The Griswold v. Connecticut case first came about from a law enacted in 1879 by the state of Connecticut. The law stated that any person who uses any drug, medicinal article, or instrument for the purposes of preventing conception shall be fined not less than $40 or imprisoned not less than 60 days. The law was first challenged in 1943 in the Tileston v. Ullman case, and then later again in the Poe v. Ullman case in 1961. However, both cases were unsuccessful in amending the law. It wasn't until the Griswold v. Connecticut case that the law was finally annulled. Estelle Griswold was executive director of Connecticut's Planned Parenthood League, and Dr. C. Lee Buxton was a professor at the Yale School of Medicine. In 1961, they challenged the previously existing law and opened a birth control clinic in New Haven, Connecticut. The police raided the clinic and arrested them and fined them each $100 for giving medical information and prescribing birth control to married couples. Buxton and Griswold declared the law violated the U.S. Constitution, particularly the 14th Amendment, and they appealed to the Supreme Court of Connecticut, which is the highest court in the state of Connecticut. After the Court of Connecticut upheld the case, Buxton and Griswold appealed to the U.S. Supreme Court. On June 7, 1965, the Supreme Court decided the case and ruled 7-2 to two in favor of Griswold. They deemed Connecticut's law a violation of rights to marital privacy, which they construed as a violation of the Fourth and Fifth Amendments. The Fourth and Fifth Amendments essentially protect the individual's private life and home from government intercession, and the Supreme Court regarded the state law to be an infringement of marital privacy, therefore a violation of the Fourth and Fifth Amendments. The Connecticut law was invalidated, and the citizens of Connecticut were permitted to use birth control. Controversy not only occurred during the decision process of the case, but after as well. During the case, certain justices debated the right to privacy was never explicitly stated in the Constitution. Justice William Douglas argued that the Bill of Rights holds certain penumbras, regions open for interpretation, and the right to privacy in the Fourth and Fifth Amendments was one of those penumbras. Other justices, while concurring that the law should be annulled, disagreed with Douglas's assertion that the right to marital privacy was ever stated and therefore exists. This would be a stricter interpretation of the Constitution, while Justice Douglas's approach would be a looser interpretation. This proclamation made by Douglas helped further validate the concept that substantive rights, such as the right to marital privacy, do exist and should be protected even if they are not explicitly stated in the Bill of Rights. More controversy ensued after the law was repealed. People on the opposite end of the spectrum who believed that birth control should be prohibited were not particularly happy about the outcome of the case. My personal opinion about the law and the outcome of the case is identical to that of the judges who ruled in favor of Griswold. I believe it is crucial to protect the liberty, one of the main principles that our nation was founded upon, of the individuals. People should have the right to choose if they want to use contraceptive devices. I believe Connecticut's law violated not only the privacy of people, but also the liberty and the ability to make a choice. I interviewed my father, David Spock, to gain another perspective on the law and the case, as well as a perspective on the medical implications for a law like this. Citizens should be allowed to purchase contraceptives. Yes, from my standpoint, I think it's an absolute right that everyone should have, both men and women. It's really hearing about this case, it's kind of hard to imagine that this really ever happened and that there was a time when people couldn't do that. So what are the medical implications for a law like this? If a law like this was enacted and still existed today, let's sort of flash forward, you know, 130 years or so and think about you know, your generation and young couples and what it would be like to not have any birth control. It, it would be really a devastating impact on society. It would take away people's right to be able to prevent from getting pregnant. Just think if it was outlawed that you could use condoms and 
how would you essentially have prevention against diseases like HIV, like chlamydia and gonorrhea, syphilis? A law like this would be really detrimental. And we're very fortunate that the type of law that they were proposing back then doesn't exist in today's society. As my father mentioned, the law would have a devastating impact on certain societies. But most importantly, from an ethical standpoint, the law was simply unfair and needed to be repealed. Even though the Constitution didn't strictly state marital rights to privacy, I agree with Douglas's conclusion that certain rights are implied and should be protected. I'm glad the law was annulled, and I think justice was served.